Globular clusters like these are interesting because there's just so many of them in and around galaxies. So in our Milky Way, in the disk alone, there's 150 globular clusters. And they're really important to study galactic evolution, figuring out where they come from, what they are, will help us learn about our galaxy as a whole. One thing I wanted to talk about with this object, we know that galaxies and galaxy clusters form within the gravitational potential well of a collapsing dark matter halo. Then the question becomes, do globular clusters similarly form within their own dark matter halos? So I found this paper called Testing for Dark Matter in the Outskirts of Globular Clusters. So recall that dark matter is this elusive substance that pervades all of the universe. It's everywhere, but it doesn't emit any light. So we can't really detect it. One of our best evidence and early kind of um, measurements for dark matter is um, through galaxy rotation curves. Basically, stars orbit around the center of our galaxy, just like planets orbit our sun. And the thing is, in our solar system, the inner planets, they orbit much quicker than the outer planets. In order to make the outer planets move faster, we would have to add more mass into the system. And so when we look at it on a galaxy scale or even a galaxy cluster scale, you'll see that the speeds of the stars in the galaxies, it increases up to a point, but when you get further and further out, it doesn't decrease as it should do. In fact, in almost all galaxies, the rotation curves are flat. And in galaxy cluster rotation curves, we see the same as well. So these galaxies orbiting around other galaxies, right, in galaxy clusters, that's the same. And so that is kind of like the most probable, like um, it's the best evidence that we have of dark matter. There is more mass in the system um, that provides these outer objects, the, um, the speeds that they have. This paper wants to know if globular clusters themselves lie within a dark matter halo. They call them subhalos. Um, and to do this, they have to measure the stars in the globular cluster, their velocities as a function of distance from the center of the globular cluster. So here is Messier 107. What we're seeing here is its velocity profile. So it's projected star velocities against their distance from the center of the globular cluster. So each circle represents a star in the globular cluster, and the size of the circle represents its weight to the fit. So some stars will have better measured velocities than others, so you'll want to have them contribute more to the fits. And so we've got a dotted line which shows its unweighted fit and a solid line showing its weighted fit of the profile. When you look at the outskirts of the globular cluster, I would say that's like anything above 10 or 20 parsecs. We've only really got four stars to measure off. So two of them are like down here and then two of them are way up here. In the pl other plot that we have, it's the same velocity profile, but they've overlaid the theoretical models. So we have a red line which corresponds to a self-gravitating model. That means that no dark matter exists. And then you've got a green line, which is the theoretical model that the globular cluster doesn't live in its own subhalo, but it is embedded within the galactic background of the dark matter halo. So the galaxy in itself has a dark matter halo, but the globular cluster doesn't have a subhalo. The two stars at around 20 parsecs, they're pretty in agreement with the green line that there's a dark matter galactic halo. But then the last two up here is better in agreement if the globular cluster is within its own dark matter subhalo. They looked at 25 globular clusters in total. 11 were consistent with just a galactic dark matter halo background. There were six globular clusters with um, flat velocity profiles, which were consistent with a dark matter subhalo, but then there were two with definitely increasing um, velo stellar velocities. And for those ones, they're sure um, these um, globular clusters lived in, in their own dark matter halo. Our Messier object, M107, was one of the unknowns. Yeah, unfortunately, they still don't know if it lives in its own dark matter halo, but hopefully with future data, 
we can find that out. The tiniest mass, they're about a million times smaller than an electron. Okay, so we're talking incredibly small. The only reason that we even knew they existed was because in radioactive decay reactions, you sort of if you balance the two sides of the equation about what you started with and what you decayed into, it wasn't quite balanced right. It was always a tiny amount of energy 